Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Today we have as our guest one of our most returning uh, guests, uh, Doug Berry. We're going to talk about his new film and a whole lot more. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. A few years ago, I got a strange sound on my cell phone and a message came across that said uh, that there was a nuclear attack going to be hitting uh, the Hawaiian Islands and that we had 18 minutes to get ready. Uh, pretty shocking. You don't, you, you really, really, there's really nothing to do. You know, the first thought is try to get to higher ground, but there's really nothing to do. Um, there's going to be a moment in your life when you won't even get a warning. Uh, there's a moment that comes in each person's life. It says, the Bible says it's appointed on once for a, to man once to live, once to die, and then the judgment. Um, but we're getting all kinds of warning signs now in the world today of what, what seems to be coming. It seems like the darkness is getting darker, but also I would say that the light is getting brighter. And so we're going to have a conversation with Doug Berry today about his new movie, I, and we're going to be talking about how to, what we can do to help prevent the tyrannical... Uh, thing that we're seeing take place in the world today. It's been repeated again and again over the generations. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, preparedness. Uh, I think the, the whole COVID thing took a lot of us by surprise. We weren't ready when it came. You know, all of a sudden, oh, I better go get water. I better go get food. Here in Hawaii, the uh, restaurants closed down and the, the tur tourists had nothing to, to, to eat as they gradually just kind of disappeared. So we're going to have a Great conversation with Doug Berry today. It may not even be a conversation. I might just say, hey, D Doug, talk to us. Hey, Doug, <laughs> aloha. <laughs> hey, aloha, Barry. How are you doing? Good. You're in Texas. I am. East Texas. Bishop East Strickland's Texas. Diocese. Yeah. The real part of Texas. Yeah. yeah. I, some, and I, I hear in Texas, some people don't, some Texans don't claim East Texas as being Texas because oh. it's, it's not deserty enough. It's, yeah. It's a lot of pine trees. You know, we're close to Louisiana. So you get a lot more humidity out here, but it is hot and it is, it is just, it's a great place to live. I'm real happy. That we're no, here. I love, I love, yeah, you're, lo you emphasize hot because you, uh, you uh, vacated, you ran for your life from Nebraska and ended up in Texas. And <laughs> I, I lived in Texas. Cold winters, yeah. I went to my senior year in college in four years uh, to Baylor University in Waco, Texas. And I got to go back for my 50th year anniversary last fall. And those people, they just are, they're just, I don't, my whole class, like, they're all Christians. I mean, it's just, mm. And, you know, although most of them are Baptists, they love they love my show. They, they're so supportive of what we do, you know. And so, no, I love I love Texas. My my five years living there uh, were just amazing. It was tough for me to be landlocked, you know, as a surfer to come from the beach yeah. of of of, of uh, California to Texas. But hey, so what happened to your face? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that a reference to the fact that I'm getting older or no. that I'm well, shaven? It's it, it, it it's all encompassing question, but actually I see a I see a scar on your right on your right cheek. Does he look worse than you or Yeah, well we're doing some self defense training. We do it once a week up here. Church security, self defense training. And uh yeah, you know what that's like. You've been in that long enough. You get shots, you get bruises, you get cuts, scrapes, things like this. So yeah, last Did you Saturday say you get shot? You get you take shots. Take you, shots, okay. And I don't mean the jab either. I'm talking about you know, someone blows. hits you when they're not supposed to hit you. It's like no aim for the pad that I'm holding, and the hand goes above the pad, and the fingers rake the face a little. Right, yeah, it's that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. You know uh, the the whole uh, thing about the 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 martial arts training. You know, my sons, two of my sons are ninja black belts i got to test them for their black belts and we've trained as well uh but i just i remember the first time we did a men's event here we had to, i have a lot of filipinos on the island and i don't know if you know this but they're very macho guys mm. and they go oh, we're not gonna, they're not going to come you know you know they're just not going to like it and 
and so at our, at our very first men's conference, we, t- we, all, we all trained in Escrima. We made sticks for them, <laughs> and we mm-hmm. taught them, uh, you know, Filipino stick fighting. I'm, I've, I was licensed as an instructor back in yeah. the day in that. So, yeah, so we kind of, I mean, nothing hurt. A, a stick moves faster than a fist, oh. and when they miss their mark, it, it can inflict pain. Yeah, and, and, you know, this is the sort of thing, too, that i got to say that I, I want to throw this in. It, with all the, uh, the threats against Catholic churches now since Roe v. Wade was overturned, groups like Ruth Sentis that are out there, um, the the interest, at least where I am, and I know other parts of the country, because uh, I talk about this all over the country, the need for us to understand the Catholics te- Catholic Church's teaching perspective on legitimate self-defense, even if it means taking up arms against an aggressor, that's in the catechism. And there's legit- legitimacy to it in certain circumstances. We're not pacifists, are we? No, we're not. No, we're, we're supposed to protect and defend. And, and, and Thomas Aquinas, a footnote in the catechism, they draw from Aquinas who says that if you're being threatened by somebody, you are more bound to protect your life than the life of the aggressor. It also states that if you have others under your care, if you're head of a community, family and so forth, you not only have a right, you have a quote unquote grave duty to protect and defend, even if it means taking up arms against an aggressor, even if it means the aggressor loses their life and it's not because you're intending to take their life but it's a result of the action that you need to apply this type of force to subdue the threat now this is a teaching of the church so a lot of people lately have been more interested someone asked me to give a talk about three weeks ago on this here in tyler and they were hoping to get about 30 or 40 people they had 120 some people showed up for it um people are much more interested in church security now because they do know that the threat is much more real so and I, I'm happy about that. I, I'm not a warmonger. I'm not someone who tries to push this stuff. Oh, let's go out there. You know, no, I look, my attitude when it comes to self-defense, when it comes to church security, any situation or scenario is you try to view, you try to diffuse it. You try to de-escalate it. You try to minimize it. You try to reduce the chaos. And you do this by being better trained and the better trained you are, the far less likely you are to find yourself in a bad situation. I just, remember, I, just remember, I just remember the time you and I went into a restaurant and we both went for the same chair. Yeah, I remember that. You know, and, and, Florida, and I just think yeah. it's the coolest thing because, you know, we're both trained in spatial awareness and, and yeah. we know where yeah. the seat is where we can have the most view and, and protect. The other, thing, the other thing about being with you, though, is I may not be in that alpha chair, but maybe you would be. But um, whichever, whichever of us is either in position, we know we have each other's backs. I got my eyeballs yes. rolling and you got your eyeballs rolling. And yeah. I'm going to tell you here in Waikiki, it's gotten a little bit gnarly. Uh, the, we've had a lot of cities sending their uh, so-called homeless, their thugs to us. And I see uh, r- aggressive action on a daily basis out here. Mm. I'm not saying that it's, um, it's always uh, some, something deadly, but people are stealing and being aggressive. And so there's a, my head is on a swivel, you know, always. Yeah. And, we, and, I, and I always should be. That doesn't mean you should be um, afraid, but you should just be alert. But the other thing is, Doug, the truth is, is the more that prepared you are, the less macho you have to be. Because uh, machoism is just an, a, a grandiose uh, a, a exhibition of someone who doesn't have self-confidence. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the more I've trained in martial arts and I've trained with some great, com- uh, not, not arts, more of the combative type fighting, the higher up you go in those ranks, the more you see a peaceful, happy person. Yes. Because they, they don't have to prove themselves to themselves or to uh, to other people. But we were in, we were in a we were doing a demonstration in the in a, a men's conference uh, about four years ago, and I had a friend of mine with me, and I said we're gonna and I and I teach about knife fighting. I use knife fighting as an example of uh, of how Jesus defeated Satan, took his weapon of death, and 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 killed mm. death with that nice. very weapon. So I said you're gonna attack me with your with this knife, and this is how you're gonna do it. And of course, it was a training knife; it wasn't sharp. And uh, when you do, I want you to do it with intensity, but not necessarily super fast. Uh, and then you're going to end up on the ground. And to do it, just do what you feel like you want to do so your arm doesn't get broken. So he attacked me. I did a wrist throw <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a knife cut you know, across the throat. But as I threw him, he wasn't expecting it. And Doug, his gun went flying across the, hmm. f- flying across the room. You know? So he's one of those people that, that carries and in a responsible way. But in Flo- this was in Florida. No one flinched. <laughs> you know, <'cause> it's in <laughs> Florida, and I know the, the 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 sheriff's department there encourages you know citizens to take the training yeah. class and to be ready. Yeah. But you know, we're gonna when we come back, we're gonna talk about your new movie uh, because it's kind of like we've, preparedness is one thing, prevention is another thing. What is what is the name of your your new movie? Doomed to repeat it. That's not what I heard. I th- I heard it was doomed to repeat it, starring Jason Jones. 
No, <laughs> yeah, when Jason would say that, yeah, he's, he's a little upset that we did two and a half hours of interview with him, and I think he he made about six minutes in the film, eight minutes in the film, maybe. But yeah. we had about twenty hours of interview. We had to boil down to sixty. I, minutes isn't that? It's eight. so tough. It's so tough. And when you, it is tough. Yeah. And, and if you have Jason for a soundbite, it's going to be twenty minutes. It is. It is. And it's all the thing is, it's all good stuff. You know. I know. It's so hard, isn't it? He's so awesome. He's so yeah, awesome. Yeah, he, and he's the one that told me, he said, Doug, look, when you edit a film, he said, sometimes to make the film work, you got to cut the best pieces out because they just don't work with the whole film. Yeah. So he so he said to me, he said, yeah, so he tried to be the second best. But it was just, <laughs> just too hard. He, he was just too good. Well, I tell you, we got him back. We had him train here for the, the we're editing this this scene pretty soon now. We had him here. Uh, of course, he li lived in Hawaii. Then now he lives in some state called Texas, but uh, <laughs> but uh, the state of tranquility actually now with the way that you guys uh, you live your lives there so well. But yeah. we we trained in the in the ancient martial art of the Lua, which is very deadly, and uh, we trained in knife fighting. And uh, about the most humiliating thing that could happen to a man happened to him during, uh, it, you know, he was the uke. He was the guy that was the victim. Or he was the attacker who became the victim. So we have some really good footage of Jason. I think you'll enjoy when we do that, awesome. when we release that. Show. We're talking with Doug Berry. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. This is Dan Boone Markham with another episode of Country Up. Bullfrogs. Toledo, Washington is a logging town in the shadows of Mount St. Helens. Where work is tough and men and women are tougher. My latest visit to Toledo included the annual bullfrog jumping contest during the Toledo Cheese Days. My son-in-law Don, daughter Angela, and grandkids Duke and Callie had the duty during the nights preceding the jumping contest of catching the bullfrogs. Catching bullfrogs is my daughter's favorite sport after razor clam digging. Yep, you heard it right. And she's a stunning beauty of a school marm, too. Watching kids trying to goad their toads along by blowing on their rears and pounding on the ground was, well, more than amusing. For the kids, it's off the charts exciting. Later, I got thinking about this amusing scene and how it is similar to our walk with God. Figuring out God's ways is often like being bullfrogs out of water. We prefer the water, our primary habitat, but sometimes God wants us to walk, I mean hop, into his habitat, which can be unfamiliar territory. That's why we need faith. We can't see God, but he's behind us, goading us along. The breath of God's Spirit sometimes blows on us as he urges us on to his path. We sometimes feel him blowing on us, but we often stubbornly refuse to jump into the race of his life for us. I advise moving along before he starts pounding on the ground. Everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. So, get off your duff and get in the race of life with God. This is Dan Laboon Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Now you can journey with other men in the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue and servant leadership through Bears Man Cave non-Facebook community and our three-year School of Manliness. Video, audio, and written content, as well as self-assessments help you to chart your new course. Join us at deepadventure.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Uh, I've got with us today Doug Berry, uh, but my, I need to r remind everybody that my book, uh, uh, the, A Surfer's Guide to the Soul and Deep Adventure the Way of Heroic Virtue, Sophia has just republished those books, and they're available on Amazon or at Sophia or at deepadventure.com in our store. We have with us today Doug Berry, and the new movie is what again? 
doomed to repeat it. It's based off that old adage that if we do not learn the mistakes of history, we're doomed to repeat them. And, and you know, Doug, we don't have to look that far back in history. I, and somehow we have this feeling that, wow, well, you know, we've kind of arrived as a, as a, as a, as a society, and you know, the the, the atrocities of. Of, of World War II, uh, the, the atrocities of, of Stalin, my people, you know, 11 million Ukrainians starved to death, the atrocities of the French Revolution, and on and on won't repeat because we're just so, so much more sophisticated now. Just look in the streets, and we know that that's different. Tell us what the base, basic message of this film is. Yeah, there was a lot of different directions we thought we could go. We announced it um, back in May of 2021, and it took so it took us about 13 months roughly to get it shot wrapped you up. were in the heart of the beast at that time of the yeah, COVID, was, whole COVID it, shutdown yeah and it was funny because when we did announce that we were going to do this film and that was the title of it and we explained we did a couple of um of uh, live events online and uh, we had some money contribute some people contribute some money to help the project get off the ground these are these are hard projects to do and they take a lot of money a lot of time <clears throat> pardon me and um the idea behind it was if we don't learn from the historical evidence that there are always power hungry, tyrannical individuals, and they will always use primarily fear to oppress people. And they'll manipulate in different ways with the fear. At times it was, you know, with Stalin and Hitler and the Gestapo and KGB, you get, you get fear of people kicking in your door and just rounding you up, throwing you in a, in a boxcar, train car, and taking you to a camp, or just executing you right there on the spot. To what we've seen as of late, the fear of health issues. And you don't want grandma to die, and you don't want to leave your house because you could spread this something out there that, that you need to be six feet apart and so forth. So you've got all different aspects of fear being used. Now it's fear of World War III. Now it's fear of climate problems. Therefore, you know, at the time we record this, there's talk that our president, it's so hard to say that, is actually talking about declaring a climate emergency. And if he declares a climate emergency, that will enact certain presidential powers that the average citizen doesn't even know exist. So it's fear, fear, fear everywhere. So we're hopping left foot to right foot. So we brought in we brought in Jason uh, Jones because he's obviously just he's just a great guy, a great Catholic, but he's also a great individual who's done so much work for human rights and dignity and people around the, the world. world. Yeah, all over the world. Yeah, he's so involved in that. So he can speak very well to everything from the French Revolution to what we're dealing with today in different parts of the globe. We brought in um, John Leake, who is a historian and he's actually a true crime author. So he, he has studied how fear has affected so many people in different you know, um, accurate crime stories, uh, real life crime stories, but also as a historian, he goes back and talks about from the Roman Empire to today, how fear was used by tyrannical people. We brought in Dr. Joe Lepetsky, who's an amazing psychologist who works with Father Chad Ripperger, the exorcist, and has just incredible information and knowledge on how the brain actually functions. And the difference between the amygdala gland, which is the fight or flight gland, and the prefrontal cortex, which is the thought process, and how the amygdala and prefrontal cortex, both very important, actually kind of combat one another in that there's that fear issue, but then the prefrontal cortex has to think us through the fear so we don't make irrational or dangerous decisions in the midst of the fear. We talk about self-defense and martial arts and training like that, and we both know that that's something that you've got to master and the better you master the fear and the emotional aspect of a crisis situation, the better you function in your training in the way you respond. That's the same idea behind what tyrannical people do when they use fear to keep you emotionally broken. And then people make the most horrible decisions off of that based on that fear when their emotions are in that upheaval. So he gives amazing information there. We also brought in Father Richard Heilman. Uh, obviously, very good friend and just a great priest. We he love talks him. about, yeah, oh, yeah, he's great. And so we go to him up in Wisconsin, interviewed him, and we talked to him about um, how the spiritual aspect of the human person is built and really what what really is the remedy against the fear, even in the spiritual realm. And so he brings tremendous insight. Um, I'm in there as well. I don't make as much. I, I think Jason's got more time in it than I do, you know, and, and I, well, I you know, you got to give the rookie a chance. <laughs> That's what it is. Okay. <laughs> well, I tell you, he uh, he was great. But my son edits the whole thing, puts the whole thing together. Does a fantastic job. But then here's the real yes, kicker. Yes, 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 Doug. 
he does a fantastic job. Oh, he does. We have a lot yeah. of respect for Jordan. He's awesome. Yeah, Jordan is is uh, is an amazing. Um, he's got a great concept and mind and eye and all of it. He knows where he's, he's leading this. Guy. Like my son Shane, who's producing this right now, um, has just a, he just has this kind of this this sense that yeah. beyond you and, and that's me, it. where it should it, go. It's, yeah, it's an untrained sense, you know, that I, you just have to thank God for. But here's and, the kicker. And my son we, Joshua too, I should say. Yeah, we were looking for a story that would really run through the whole documentary, and we wanted a story that was very pertinent, relatable. Um, but not too distant. And so we, we had, we had uh, communicated with some people that were Holocaust survivors from World War II. Um, nothing felt just quite right as we prayed about this. And then towards the end of our search, we found a woman who's a Cuban refugee named Lala Mooney. Uh, she has a son who's a congressman out in West Virginia, Alex Mooney, um, good pro-life guy. And Lala and then a friend, um, Carlos Pedro, who's on there in the film as well, um, were both refugees out of Cuba. Carlos was part of the Peter Pan operation, which was mm. about 14,000 children, infants to teenagers, who in a joint effort, get this, between the U.S. government and the Catholic Church, they worked with Cuba for uh, over a year to get over 14,000 children out of Cuba. Carlos is one of them. Now, Carlos mm. tells a very, very touching story about leaving his mother and I really, I can't do justice talking about it. You've got to watch the film. It's free. It's on YouTube. Go to BR Coalition YouTube channel and click the link there. There is an age restriction on it because some of the images and the B-roll that we found is pretty frightening with regards to what tyrants have done over the years. But Carlos tells the story of leaving his mother. And I'll just say this. He said, when we left, we thought that communism in Cuba was going to fall within a matter of months. Mm -hmm. He said, I never went back. And mm -hmm. to this day, as we speak, Bear, communism is still in place in Cuba. So for people who think, and you know this is going on right now, even in America, we've got tyrannical powers. There's no question. They're trying to, they've, they've already crushed in many ways the First Amendment, and they continue to do that. They've already uh, attacked and are continuing to attack the Second Amendment. There's so many other areas of our constitution that are being blown up left and right. Our education system. Education system. You're right. Run the for the board. Of run for the school board. You people that are listening. Yeah, you got to do it on a local level. You got to locally. You run for get city council. Yep, exactly. And find out what your sheriff is about, and get good sheriffs in there. They are so powerful in your county and yeah. your local area. You've got to get good sheriffs in there as well. But we find out very easily that what we see happening in our country. Um, is not what these Cuban refugees came to. And they tell you that in the film. Right. This oh, is not I, what yeah. we thought. Oh. Yes. Yeah, it's, the, it's like, wake up. We're seeing what, what we saw yes. 20 years ago. We're seeing it happening today. Absolutely. Yeah, it's right in the face. And so just like people right now are waiting, and you probably hear this too, we're waiting for the midterm elections, and that'll fix everything and turn things around. I don't think we can count on that. I just think that's a very dangerous way to go. Do we need good midterm elections? You need good elections all the time. You got to put good people in office, God fearing, God loving people who understand what constitutional freedoms and truths are. That being said, though, there's a spiritual deprivation going on, a spiritual void that is that is that is really off the off the rails now. And Father Chad Ripperger said that in a podcast we did with him um, on the U.S. Grace Force a while back. He said there are five key demons that sit at what he refers to as the table exorcists call it the table this is satan's table his war room you could say and these top five demons their particular bend you could say is to promote things that all have to do with either death destruction sexual twistedness like transgender and uh trans you know dis, you know, trans uh, gender dysphoria these sorts of things homosexual behavior this sort of stuff um just all the twisted stuff child sacrifice like abortion and all and these top demons all all the work that they do has all been legalized in America now. And yeah. Father Ripker makes that point. There yeah. was a time when these things were not legal, but they're now legal. And he says, that's the difference. We've opened portals with the spiritual realm that are getting our backsides really kicked. And so it's important for us to realize that we will be doomed to repeat these things if we do not learn from history spiritually and naturally and get engaged. We're talking with Doug Barry and the, the wet, your website, Doug, is? Uh, BR coalition.com brcoalition.com brcoalition.com that's the website and then and then the youtube channel br coalition youtube channel 
Yep. And BR, of course, stands for Battle Ready. We're talking yes. with Doug Berry. I kept wanting to say who we're speaking to, but I didn't want to interrupt your flow of conversation. <laughs> this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak. I remember surfing on YMA and hearing the sounds of helicopters. And usually what that meant is someone was in trouble somewhere and the helicopters were coming to the rescue. And right now standing here, four or five Coast Guard type helicopters flew from Oahu heading towards the Big Island. The Big Island in the last few days has been experiencing eruptions that we haven't seen since the 50s. Suddenly the earth is shaking beneath the homes of the people. The earth is opening up and lava is spewing forth, fountains of lava and ash. We've had VOG here in the last week or two where the ash from the volcano comes all the way over to the island of Oahu and it kind of affects our breathing and our ability to see. The earth is trembling, the earth is shaking on the big island, tremors, um, many of them every minute. We look around us and we think that our life is just solid. We look at concrete and we think it's concrete, we think it's solid. We look at our, our job or we look at our family or we look at our, our country, we look at our lives and everything just seems so solid. The greatest emperors in the world thought they were on top of the world and that everything was so safe and so solid. The fact is though, that there's everything is moving ground, everything is shaking ground except for the rock that doesn't roll, the rock that doesn't move, the rock that is the cornerstone uh, of the church, and that rock is the rock of Jesus Christ. I've been to the tomb of Jesus. I've actually been able to go in a little bit into the tomb of Jesus. This is the rock that's unmovable. When Jesus came to earth, when God became man, and stood in solidarity with mankind. He laid down a fortress that we can run to, that we can stand on, and we know that it's firm. Don't trust in the shaking of the earth around you. Trust in the unshakable power and faithfulness of God. This is Bear Wozniak, The Deep Adventure Moment. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak deepadventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure starring Jason Jones. Oh, I'm sorry, I get confused. <laughs> Jason always makes me think that that's the case. I hope you guys yeah. know. By the way, if you want more Jason Jones uh, on our, our radio show, you need to uh, text below when we, if you're watching this on YouTube, more cowbell. But actually, now we have the real star of our show. <laughs> <laughs> we have Doug Berry with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one caught me off guard, Bear. That's a good one, though. <laughs> and people want people want more cowbell. Apparently, uh, we just love Jason so much. Today's let's today is let's 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 uh, let's make jokes about Jason Jones Day. Uh, but Doug Barry is with us. Uh, you know, Doug, uh, we have this we have a thing going on on our, on our website deepadventure.com called the School of Manliness, and so we invite people to come to. Our website, it's a three-year curriculum. Uh, men join us. That We have a, the man cave where men can have a conversation with each other. Uh, but then we go through the, the curriculum together. Uh, no matter where you join, you just join us where we are. But we're also helping men to launch uh, uh, doing this curriculum. It's really cool stuff. It's video. It's it's written. It's, it's two-minute videos, longer videos, all kinds of um, curriculum for each month. We specialize in one area. And so 
now what's happening is we're having uh, fathers go through the curriculum with their sons, and you can track them as they go through it. Um, so that's the jab. Now here's the punch. Doug Barry, what is this? Your website's got some stuff going on. I, I, I haven't dug into it all the time, no pun intended, but uh, you have a whole area of preparedness and other things like that. Can you, can you just give us a, a few minutes of that, and we'll get back to talking more about your, your film. The film is called... Uh, Doomed to repeat it. Doomed to repeat Okay. So, uh, yeah, but Doug, you've got some really cool stuff going on uh, on your website for men, too. Yeah, you know, there's something here that I think a lot of people don't think much about. We've got a lot of red flags, a lot of signs of the times that are telling us that we're on the brink of something. And in some places, not on the brink, they're already in the throes of serious natural crisis. For example, look at the war in the Ukraine. Uh, one day, People are going to the park, they're shopping, they're hanging out, and the next day, Russia invades. Now, we've had Father James Altman on our podcast, and he actually came out to the premiere of the film. He flew out to Dallas, and he talked about something in particular. He said, you know, if you go to the Auschwitz Museum in Poland, what you find is two particular rooms amongst all of the um, devastation uh, that's out there. One room is the August 31st, August 31st, 1939 room. And next is the September 1st. Oh, room. my. God. I've never heard that before. Yeah. And the wow. August 31st room is on the walls. You see images and such of what what Poland was like, what Warsaw was like in particular the day before the Blitzkrieg hit. And then September 1st, you walk into that room and then you see the images of all the devastation. And Father Altman's point is that's how fast the snap of a finger everything can change. So, you know, we've got to be thinking when we see the signs of the times and the red flags that are out there, you know, there's power outages periodically going on in our country right now, as well as other parts of the world. Ghana, for example, is reported on, on Fox News. Ghana, major power outage, millions of people affected by it. Okay, entire cities completely dark, all right, which affects everybody. Your water system, because the community water system runs off of power to get water to everybody's homes. So now water's cut off. So I always say to people, if you go to your faucet, turn that little knob there and no water comes out of that faucet, what water do you have in your house to drink even? The average person needs about a gallon a day roughly to be reasonably healthy. In hot climates, of course, that's gonna change. If you're, if you're a worker, you're out there physically working or you're a mother, you're nursing a child, you're pregnant, whatever. This is very serious if water's shut off. You, know, you can live about three days roughly without water and you're dead. So with all the signs of the times that we see, food, water, rise in violent crime, the BLM riots are a perfect example of cities being caught on fire, lit on fire. A lot of people don't know how to protect and defend themselves. They don't have extra food. They don't have water. They don't have medical. They don't have shelter. They don't have backup shelter. They don't have any community they can go work with other people on. They've never even addressed these things. No generator, we, no, yeah. Nothing, no generator, yeah. no backup, no solar power, no anything. So we put together a course called the Battle Ready Emergency Preparedness Course. We call it BREP, B-R-E-P for short as an acronym. And BREP, the Battle Ready Emergency Preparedness Course, which you can find at brcoalition.com, covers five key areas and it's food, water, medical, shelter, and defense. We also throw in transportation as, as a part of this because you've got to be able to move from A to B if your crisis is affecting where you are and you're compromised and you've got to get somewhere else, you've got to join forces with other people. This course is the only, it's the only one we have found, well, we put it together, but it's the only one, we, we did a lot of research. We don't know any other Catholic angle or perspective on this because we include the spiritual lens of so, what the church is right, teaching is right look the corporate works of mercy are feed the hungry you drink the thirsty clothe the naked shelter the homeless care for the sick visit the imprisoned bury the dead these are physical things we're supposed to do for one another but in a crisis if you can't even feed shelter clothe give drink to yourself how are you going to help your neighbor so the idea is we've got to be preparing better on a natural level and bear i'll tell you one of the biggest problems out there is people who say, oh, Doug, I'm just going to trust Jesus. He'll take care of it. I like to reference a couple of That's not prudence. That's not prudence. No, it isn't prudence. And, you know, prudence take prudence, certain being and preparedness uh, take away fear. Yeah. You know, just, just like being a, trained in a martial art takes away a certain amount of fear. So we're not fear mongering here. We're just saying nope. being, being, being prudent, which is one of the four cardinal virtues, uh, and part of that is to be prepared. And so why not? Exactly. In fact, we had a, just a, a county just about an hour and a half away from where we live right now. Uh, just uh, last week, it was reported that their water just shut off. They ran out of water. You know, a couple of small towns in this county, mm -hmm. you know, you're talking thousands of, of households, just no water. And they, the officials said, look, our water towers are empty. 
we had to shut it off until we can refill these water towers, but it's much slower now because the drought and everything is hard everywhere. Mm -hmm. People got you know, some restrictions of water. Let's be careful about this stuff. Let's be prudent there as well. But many people were saying they rushed to the grocery store right away to buy water. And what does a grocery store do right away when that happens? They start restricting how much they'll sell. One case of water per household, for example. Mm -hmm. Now you're rationing. So what's the prudent thing to do? How about what Joseph did in the Old Testament? When Pharaoh has the dreams of the seven fat cows, the seven skinny cows, the seven grains that are horrible and, and unhealthy and the seven that are healthy. And when he has these dreams, he doesn't know what they mean. Joseph is pulled out of prison and he explains by God's power that these dreams mean you're going to have seven years of bounty and then you're going to have seven years of famine. Well, what do we do, Joseph? Joseph says, basically, God is saying you need to prepare. So for seven years, and Pharaoh made Joseph the most powerful man in the kingdom of, of, of Egypt, the land of Egypt, except for Pharaoh himself. And he was, given, he was given Pharaoh's daughter as his wife, and then he had children. And for seven years, he's going around and they're storing up food and all the other provisions necessary because seven years of famine, drought, you name it, was going to hit the land. And scripture records that people came from all over the world, one translation says. All of Egypt and all the provinces around Egypt came to Joseph, the famous line, Ite ad Yosef, go to Joseph, which is really a precursor for what we have today with the St. Joseph of the New Testament. We should all be going to St. Joseph. But I guess, Bear, what I'm saying is we have scriptural account. How about Noah builds an ark? It took time to build the ark as Joseph took seven years to store up food. Everybody should be looking at what's happening in our world and have some reasonable amount, food, water, medical, shelter, community, build community, and learn how to defend these things. Protect and defend. And for those out there, Bear, who say, and I get, I, I get frustrated about this, I'm adamant about this. No, Jesus doesn't want us to fight back this and that. Luke 22, 36, Jesus sends them out another time, and he says to them, take a bag, take a purse, which means money, finance, changing, and so forth. And if you do not have a sword, he says, sell your cloak and buy one. Peter says, we have two, and Jesus says, two is enough. So I figure, okay, a handgun and a rifle, whatever. But the idea is having yourself prepared to defend and protect is a good thing. Thing. And that's what we do in our Battle Ready Emergency Preparedness course. If people are interested, it's a one-time buy. It's over four hours of video. It's a dozen or so manuals. And what you buy right now, everything we add to it in the future, you get for the same price you've just paid. You pay no more after this. BRCoalition.com is where they can get it. You know, right now we have this window of opportunity, too, where I think <clears throat> just as far as preparedness, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, having the license to be able to carry if that time came. There may come a time when right now you don't want to carry, but having that license to carry, because that window can close again. You know, we, we have this window of opportunity in the pro-life er arena also uh, to, 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 to do things. There's this kind of we have this opportunity. The window's open. The door's open. But we still have yeah. to go out and do the stuff. We're talking with Doug Barry. And what's your website again, Doug? BRCoalition.com. Same YouTube channel, BR Coalition YouTube channel. And the new the new film is called Doom to Repeat It. Doom to Repeat It. This is yeah. Bear Wozniak. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure and Doug Barry. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. We invite our mama bears to join our non-Facebook community created just for you, to share the journey with each other and to take the self-guided one-year course on the Virtues Plus, you have free access to all of the Long Ride Home TV show, all of the Bear Wozniak video version of our radio show, plus the Catechism in a Year videos, all at deepadventure.com. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. There's so many smart people in the world. A lot of them, Doug was asking me about the books that are behind my back, uh, <laughs> are starting with the early church fathers. They were smart people, weren't they? But I, I don't remember who said it, Doug. Probably you do, and I'm going to paraphrase it. But it, it basically it says, evil carries with it 
the seeds of its own destruction because evil cannot create anything. All it can do is destroy. Thomas Aquinas teaches us, teaches us that too. God created and everything he created was good. So evil, um, evil, uh, all it can do is, is destroy. And we're seeing... We I, see think, I think Jason Jones said that. Oh, yeah, the Jason wise. Jones. You don't know, it's the Jason Jones. The wise words of the Jason Jones. Well, you know, yeah. J Jason Jones, the problem with Jason is all the early <laughs> church fathers plagiarized him. They did. They yeah, did. It's just so wrong. Far before he was even conceived in his mother's <laughs> yeah, womb, they were still so, stealing from it. Yeah, it's just so wrong. <laughs> How often have you found that? I find out I have a really great idea. Then I'm reading some an ancient Catholic book or something like, oh, gosh, someone already said it. They said it in Latin, but still they... They they already said it, but but we see that uh, we see that in in the anarchy in the streets. We see that in just someone just defacing property just for the sake of defacing property. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not um, that's not a societal problem. That's evil. That's that's right. the that's the manifestation of a demonic and a spiritual attack. Do you, can you talk to us a little bit about what we do as husbands and fathers and men? Because one of our roles is to protect the vulnerable. And, and listen, you know what? Doug, my new book I'm working on, you're going to love it. Where have all the cowboys gone? 12 Rules of Manliness. The first 12 oh, Rules of Manliness. Yeah, don't nice. you? Yeah, you dig that. Well, I like that. But, you know, and I'm a great, if you know, what you don't see behind me is my collection of Louis L'Amour Westerns. I have over 100 of his books. I used oh. to subscribe to the Genuine Imitation Leather version of his books. I get one a month. Louis L'Amour was our great Western writer. Mm. And, uh, and, and I think every father should have their sons read these books because they all are about manly virtue. Uh, and one of the things you'll see in his books is that there's always a strong woman. Long before there were strong women on TV and other places, in his westerns, the women were always very strong. And I give credit to our fierce, what, what we call our mama bears out there. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we have a... a thing people women can participate in called the mama bears on our deepadventure.com website but but the uh the women are powerful especially fierce when it comes to their family but that doesn't mean that at times they're vulnerable you know the, the women in these westerns a lot of times there were some bad guys after them and they needed a man to step in in between them right. and danger and i tell you you know jason jones is so we're, this is the Jason Jones uh, show, I guess, today. But, you know, <laughs> people, people are so involved in the pro-life movement. The whole key to the pro-life movement is men. Men not taking advantage of girls, you know, you know finding pleasure outside of marriage as opposed right. to a nuptial union. Um, if there's a strong man standing next to a vulnerable woman who's pregnant, she probably won't have an abortion, whether it's a father, uncle, or even the, the her father or the father of the child. And right. so... This area of men, you know, we're not saying women are weak, but they're 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 powerful. But there's certain things that a man can do that that we're wired to do. What is the f role of the father, uh, husband, uh, men in general in in the in the this the spiritual battle that we're fighting now? Yeah, there's no question about that that strength of a woman part that you know. And I like to remind people that you know, um, this is something that God gives strength to all, but there's different roles and there's different areas of that strength. And, you know, when it comes to any military operation, for example, you're going to have the foot soldier, you're going to have the Air Force, you're going to have the tank commanders, you're going to have all different areas. They all have their strengths and they have to work together. Female and male, same idea here. The role of that man, though, is we have been given a protective nature in general. Now, I'll say a lot of men have been emasculated. They've been they've been sissified, wussified, They've allowed neutered. themselves to be emasculated. They've they allowed have. them. They're they not have. victims. They've allowed it. Exactly. I agree with that. You know, and I look, I grew up with, with an alcoholic father and a mother who had, you know, some emotional breakdowns because of her, her husband's drinking. And my mm. mom's dad, my grandfather, who died before I was born, was an alcoholic. So I grew up in a family where my dad didn't sit down and talk, okay, son, these are, these are masculine virtues and characters you need to focus on. I had to figure all this out on my own. I would never claim to be a victim. I'm not going to say oh, I'm a victim because of my father. I'm, I'm, I'm a victim of my upbringing. Look, I already know it's written on my heart as a man. I want to protect and defend those things that God has put in my life that, that, that are good, that are holy, that, that I love. When people say I'm a lover, not a fighter, as Frank Sheed in his book, Basic Theology for Beginners, writes, um, if you say I'm a lover, not a fighter, you lie, because if you love, you will fight for that that you love or who you love. Absolutely. Love and responsibility. And, yeah. So the idea that we men would not fight for those that God entrusts to our care is, is, is ridiculous. It's in us. If we're not doing it, then we've got a problem we've got to overcome. 
first thing a man's got to do is he's got to he's got to make the decision look it's just the right thing to do and then he's got to get off his backside and take the steps to be ready to do that spiritually and naturally there's too many cases where i see men that are that are one side or the other of that there are guys out there they're, they're carrying and they're armed and they're ready they got a sign on the front of their house this house is protected by smith and wesson don't you dare come in okay that's great i'm fine with all that but then they don't have any spiritual aspect to them. right you know they don't have a rosary on their you know near uh, them at all yeah the most powerful of the weapons exactly yeah they're not sprinkling holy water or blessed salt around their home they're not fast when you walk into my house the there's a black belt hanging up to let give people fair warning and also the rosary there you go right yeah. yeah, and that's the natural and supernatural the right there. Right there. And, and that's where a man has to be. Simply put, you need to be a spiritual warrior and you need to be a physical warrior. Now, your strengths are going to vary, obviously, from man to man in different areas. Absolutely. But men, physically, their strength, like, for example, fighting styles. You know, I took Taekwondo, I took Okinawan style. You know, you've taken, you know, many styles yourself. Um, my friend Chuck taught me what I call Chuck Bow style, which basically <laughs> is much more of a, Hey, Doug, there's three guys. They're all coming at you at the same time. You're not going to have any time to go. Whoa! He says, they're coming at you right away. It's more Krav Maga style where you just got to engage fast and furious. You got to go blender on them, you know? Um, but a man's got to learn. I've never heard that style. saying before. Blender. <laughs> yeah. Blender. You got to go blender. You know, you just got to coming in with everything. Right. But the idea that then men don't train in anything is a problem spiritually or physically you need to have some idea how to protect those that god entrusted to your care you know what doug I, whether I, you're married or not yeah you know i i've i've trained with master stephen hayes the first white ninja you know i've trained in uh, as a second degree in the ninjutsu art and other, i like to say other things but you know who can really deal with okay i say the quite right you're gonna say jason jones no no yeah jason is gnarly dude <laughs> but uh man his 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 uh sidekick and his it, his roundhouse kick but no his uh, master Hayes's wife mm. she can school you on what a small person can do real mm. fast and so it doesn't have to do with size but a d different size needs to adapt mm -hmm. you know but but a, a big big part that we do in training in the martial arts is that um I especially in the ninja art is that usually when you you're in a fighting situation quite often um there's a first is a kind of surprise or there's a fear or wondering what's really going on and so you have to be prepared to fight in any mindset. So someone who, someone, a man or a woman who's, a, who's smaller of frame or doesn't have necessarily have that, what they might call macho attitude, doesn't mean that they still don't have kuleana to, to train to be able to defend themselves. Right. But then exactly. there's this other thing is my wife can smell a rat. She mm -hmm. has that, she has that spiritual antenna up, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to s discern and, and meet. And I believe I, I do do too, to discern a demonic presence. Mm -hmm. And to buy. So what do, what do you because I remember one thing about you that so was so cool is how you blessed your home. You were taught to bless your home and your family when you were young. What can right. men do like that to to to, to bring to to uh, people say sometimes, Barry, you ever get under spiritual attack? And I go, no, I'm on the attack and I just face resistance. Mm -hmm. So t talk story about what that just that spiritual element within the home, how the father can take authority. Yeah, you got to incorporate the spiritual weapons, but first and foremost, the heart's got to be in the right place. So mm. we men, we've got to be getting the confession. We've got to be receiving the Eucharist. If you're not Catholic, then at the very least, you got to get on your knees every day and you got to be turning to God in prayer, read scripture. All those pieces need to be in place. Now, when it comes to spiritual weapons, bless salt, holy water. Yeah, I was told by a priest years ago, do you bless your wife? You know, we're pregnant with our first child. I said, well, no. He said, why not? Uh, I, I was very uncomfortable moment. So I go home that day. There's a very short version of the story. And I have to wait until she's asleep because I'm cowardly. Now, I'm working out, I'm martial arts, and, you know, I'm, I'm gun guy. I'm, I'm but running you won't a bless your wife. Marathon. I would, yeah. but I wouldn't bless my wife. Talk about a coward. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, I wouldn't engage in that aspect. So holy water, bless salt, put a drop of holy water on your finger, men, trace the sign of the cross on your wife's forehead, mm -hmm. on your children's forehead, sprinkle it in your home, put blessed salt in the corners of your home, around the outside of your house. And do it, do it regular, do it monthly, do it regularly. Do it regularly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hang a St. Benedict medal. I got a big one about yeah. four inches in diameter above my front you door. You do? Oh yeah. 
I have, have little a, mini, I have little yeah. mini scapulars tied around all the doorknobs of all my exterior you know, doors. The, the in reason my house. why that's important, and we got to we got to go, is because Satan hates authority, and that brings yep. the authority of, of Jesus Christ and the Catholic Church, the authority yes. He gave to the Catholic Church. It's not a trinket. It's it's just it's just it's just a, it's just one of our powerful sacramental. Yeah, powerful men. Weapons. I would say this in closing, from my perspective on this, is men take the spiritual authority that God has given you as the head of your home, head of your family that God has entrusted to you. Understand what that is. More detail on that, go to Father Chad Ripperger. He's got a great book called Deliverance Prayers for the Laity. Yes. Read the book, use the book. I pray from that book and engage in that authority. All right? Amen. No one's allowed to come into your home Doug, that does not they... have the right to be there. Take that That's authority That's right. Back. And I know that you speak from experience, too, of dealing head on with, with demonic you know, elements. So I take Doug at his word. Doug, where can they find you? brcoalition.com and on our YouTube channel, BR Coalition YouTube channel. Man, Doug, we love you. Dude, I don't know what to say. I'd like to ask people if they want more Doug Berry to say more cowbell. That's what I say for Jason Jones. But but hey, <laughs> hey, hey, can I, I'm going to message you, see if we can get you back again there. I just, I just miss you, first of all. Just fun to get yeah, to, get it's to see good to see you again, brother. Okay, my brother, we got to run. Go do your, go get, go get, you go do the battle and the rest of us will go get battle ready. <laughs> God, God bless you, man. Great to be with you. Okay. Till next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Hey, if you haven't been to the Bear Wozniak DeepAdventure.com web store, you really will be shocked what we have there. We have all of my books, and since I'm a Benedictine oblate, we have the St. Benedict exorcism necklaces and rings and crosses too, plus tons of cool t-shirts for men and women, wrist rosaries, warrior rosaries, daily inspirational journals for either a man or a woman, and so much more. Our deepadventure.com web store is awesome. So check it out if you want to find the perfect gift.